is IVF too hard? Should you not do it? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OB-GYN and REI. Every single day I talk to people about IVF, whether it is professionally at my job, practicing as a fertility doctor, or whether it's online, on social media, trying to help patients understand the process. Because as we know, when you start entering into the fertility space, there's so much we don't know about our bodies. So today I wanna to address one of the most common questions that I get asked or the most common statements somebody says to me, which is, I don't wanna do IVF because it is too hard. Before we dive in, this channel exists so that you can learn more about your body. Too often, women's symptoms, pain, health is just ignored. And you can't advocate for yourself unless you understand what's normal so you can understand what's not. That's why this channel exists, so please subscribe, comment, share, and follow along. Is IVF too hard? IVF is not something that anybody seeks out to plan to do to grow their family, especially not when you're younger and you're envisioning what your family may look like. However, the technology exists, it's amazing, and it has allowed so many people to become parents who otherwise may not have had the opportunity, whether it is because of the cause of your infertility, genetic mutations, recurrent pregnancy loss, or preserving your fertility in order to conceive at a later date, IVF has so many different opportunities. But the barrier to care that we always talk about is financial. However, all studies are actually going to tell us, and from my own personal experience, the number one reason why people don't proceed is actually more of an emotional reason, that it feels too burdensome, too stressful, too hard. And so people are electing to not proceed with IVF when that might be the thing that changes their life. Now, does it matter to me if you choose to do IVF or not? Honestly, that's such a personal decision, as is growing your whole family. If you have kids, when you have kids, how many kids to have. It's not my business to tell you what to do. It's not my business to tell my patients what to do. My job, my role, is to give people data so they can make the decisions that are right for them. Because you can't make decisions on data you don't know. And one thing I know for sure is that too many people disregard IVF. Don't even sit in front of me don't even learn about their own body or understand what the process would be like for them. And to me, that's what I find unacceptable because you can choose to do whatever you want to do once you know what it is. But when you're just taking rumors and assumptions and making a life decision based on what somebody else says, you would probably never tolerate that when it comes to your career or other aspects of your life. So we should take family planning and family building just as serious. So my number one Please, the number one thing I want to say is that it's your body, it's your life. Please don't make a blanket statement like this is too hard. You've done hard things. I've done hard things. People do hard things every single day. And hard is relative and subjective. And on the back end, the top thing that my patients tell me is that that wasn't nearly as hard, as bad as I thought it would be. Why is it hard and why do people say that? Number one, it's not explained. Anything that you don't understand that's not explained to you is always going to be more burdensome, more overwhelming. There's going to be anxiety involved, and there's no way to judge if the care that you're getting is appropriate or if your results are expected or not. You'd be shocked at the number of people who just present for a cycle at a clinic, and they don't know what their expected outcome is going to be. And then they will contact me and say IVF failed because they got no normal embryos. And that does feel like a failure. But if I run their stats based on different parameters, that might be the expected outcome. And it might just take numerous cycles. So that's where understanding what your road is going to look like. I always say, are you running a marathon or are you running a 5K? Like those are different races and you prepare and train differently. And I would not be so naive to just go run a marathon without doing research for it first. And I love running. So Understanding your odds of success with IVF, number one, is going to be based primarily on female factors, how old you are and how many eggs that you have. The older you are, the harder it is, even if you have more eggs. The younger you are, the easier it is, even if you have fewer eggs. However, having more eggs, more the merrier, is always going to help math and the numbers play in your favor. 
The crazy thing about human reproduction is that we're not supposed to carry litters. We're not meant to have more than one child at a time. So our body has a lot of redundancy in the process because humans can't carry so many babies and you have a limited number of pregnancies. This means not every egg that's available in one month will grow to maturity. Not every mature egg will fertilize, will grow to an implantation stage embryo called the blastocyst, will be genetically normal, or will implant and turn into a baby. That statement alone feels so overwhelming. But the more eggs you put into the formula, and the percentage that's genetically normal in the back end gives you a guide for how easy the road may be. Meaning, if you're 30 years old and I expect 20 eggs based on your antral follicle count and your AMH, we can play the math equation. It's important to understand what is your antral follicle count, what is your AMH, your ovarian reserve, and I have some videos on that before you start IVF. This is a representation of how many eggs are available in this month. The way that I think about it is that if you imagine inside your ovaries is a vault where all your eggs are kept. So from the moment you're born, the vault is full. Throughout your life, eggs come out of the vault. And when the vault is empty, you're in menopause. Every single month, a group of eggs comes out of the vault. And what's really interesting is that the number of eggs sent out is a representation of the number of eggs that remain. So when the vault is more full, you're younger more eggs come out every month. And when the vault is less full, you're older, fewer eggs come out of the vault. Eventually, we run out of eggs. We go into ovarian failure, also known as menopause. What also happens though, is that as the eggs are sitting inside the vault, the chromosomes are just held in line and they move spots the longer they stand there. I always say this is like having a line of kindergartners. If I ask them to stand there for 39 years, they're gonna move spots. And that's the same thing that happens to our chromosomes inside our eggs. The longer they've been sitting there, even if you are super, super healthy, tincture of time matters. However, there's things that you do or you have done that might accelerate that depletion or you might have a higher percentage of chromosomes out of line. And there's things that you do that might slow that down. So this is not shocking information, but behaviors that result in inflammation or toxins accelerate the depletion of eggs and accelerate the change in egg quality, meaning poorer eggs, smoking cigarettes, high toxin exposure, chronic disease or inflammation, things that are good for you, fruits and vegetables, and antioxidants, and getting sleep when your cells repair. So the healthy and the unhealthy state do impact some portion of your results when it goes through IVF. Do I ever hold somebody to like get healthier before they go through the process? Very rarely, although I do encourage concurrent optimization of your lifestyle and the factors you can so that you know you're putting the best eggs forward. If I get those 20 eggs, you're not gonna have every egg fertilized and then go through. So if an average 30 year old has about 20 eggs outside their vault, and I'm trying to get them all to grow, that's what IVF is. All IVF is is giving you hormones that are like the hormones your body normally makes, just at abnormal times to try to override the normal process. Normally, the brain sends out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates one follicle to grow, the rest of them die. I wanna get all the eggs to grow. So what we're going to do is stop your body from sending out FSH, so it's considered suppression, get the eggs all out of the vault and they're all hungry. And then you're gonna start taking FSH shots. Now I'm gonna feed more of them so that they can grow together. These are not crazy hormones. These are not things that are abnormal. This is exactly like what your body is giving you, just more and at different times in a sequence to override the normal brain ovary connection because the brain and ovary just wanna have that one baby at a time. So this fear of I don't wanna do unnatural medications or shots or hormones are weird. That's not actually what we're doing. So I think that's an important thing to know. The shots that you're taking are subcutaneous. They go in like the fat area of your stomach, very tiny, small needle, like a diabetic who gives insulin. People who have a fear of needles can still do IVF, I promise. I have plenty of patients who fall into that category. From there, you come in for some ultrasounds and monitoring until the eggs are mature and you take them out of your body. And that takes about two weeks. And I'm not seeing you every single day. Yes, there's some flexibility you have to have, but it's not that this process is taking forever. I always say there's about a month of prep work, two weeks of the simulation, then the eggs are out of your body, and then the magic's happening in the lab and we're waiting. We're waiting for at least another month to find out how many normal we have. What's happening is the eggs are being fertilized, 
embryos are being grown, and then if you do genetic testing, the placenta is being biopsied, and we wait for those results. Normally, this is going to result in, of the eggs you get that are mature, about 75 to 80% fertilized. So let's say we have 16 out of 20 fertilized. We're happy. About half of those are going to grow to an implantation stage embryo called the blastocyst. So now we have eight. And then from the eight, we would expect a proportion genetically normal in accordance with your age. So if you're 30, I would expect 60 to 70% genetically normal, which means I'd be getting around five genetically normal embryos, which is fantastic. You're waiting for these results. Then we get the body ready for a frozen embryo transfer, taking one embryo and putting it back in your body. There's different protocols that you can use, but the essence is get the lining to grow, warm up an embryo and put it inside. That's like a pap smear. There's no anesthesia, nothing intense. There's a IV anesthetic for the egg retrieval. It takes about 20 minutes, no intubation, no breathing tube. For the transfer, you're wide awake. Very easy, not painful, I promise. But what we're doing then is then we wait our two-week wait, we never get to escape it until we get to our positive pregnancy test. That takes about four months. So just to set the road of expectation, even if things go perfect, it just takes time. Prep, a couple weeks, a month, prep, transfer, a couple weeks, it just adds up. So I always tell somebody, plan on four to five months for the process. I think thinking it would take a month and then it doesn't makes this process seem overwhelming. Understanding that none of the meds we're giving you are crazy or fake or unnatural. They're hormones. They're just giving to you in a sequence that is allowing us to override the brain ovary connection to get more eggs to have a higher chance of success. When it comes to IVF, most people get pregnant. And I think there's this misnomer because we hear the bad stories. If you have enough embryos, that's the big caveat. A genetically normal embryo put inside has a 65% chance of having a baby. After two embryos, so either the first one worked or it didn't, and we went on to the second, that's now 88%. And after the third, it's 95%. So if I have three genetically normal embryos, I should have a 95% chance of walking out of there with a baby, which is just fabulous odds. The older you get, the less eggs you have, the harder it is to get to three normal embryos. And that's why if you are 40 and you have eight eggs, you might need to get the eight eggs from one month in order to send off three embryos for testing. And with a 25% chance of them being normal, you very well need to prepare that you probably have to do another cycle, and that's okay. If you know that's the road you're running, you can train for the marathon. I find that having a team that supports you, somebody who explains the process, and knowing your own expected results are really important. A thing about statistics in my world, I can give you any number I want, but for you, it's 100 or zero, and that's the truth. You shouldn't let numbers stop you from doing something that feels like the right decision for you. You should understand them. We shouldn't be naive to what the reality is going to look like. If it might take you five cycles, getting the eggs from five different months to make the math work, to have enough embryos for the size of family you want, that's okay. But you deserve to know that and make that choice. And if somebody is telling you that you're not a candidate for IVF, especially if you are young, most clinics do have a certain age cutoff at some point where the odds of having any normal eggs is so low that it feels wrong to take somebody's money for it. But if you're young, and especially if you're young and you're still having periods, and somebody tells you you're not a candidate, please, please, please get another opinion. All right, friends. Well, I'd love to know what IVF questions you have so that we can answer them. I find that people come in with so many preconceived notions, and I would love to answer those and break them down for you in a follow-up video. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD for more information. Thanks.